Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. Well, today is another exceptionally exciting day here in the shop because a couple of days ago, I got this mysterious email from DJI saying, Rick, we might have something going on in December. Would you like to be involved? <laughs> of course I'd like to be involved. So I responded immediately and then you wait because you're never sure. Are you going to be involved? Is there really a project coming? And you wait and you wait a little longer. And I'm like a nine-year-old at Christmas where I know Christmas is on Thursday, but I got a week to go and I just can't wait to get my hands on new technology. Well, lo and behold, this morning, the doorbell rang. I went out in the front porch and guess what was out there? A nondescript box and inside that box was the brand new DJI Mini 3 drone. There it is right there. And it's not just the drone, it's the fly more combination, which includes the drone, the DJRC, and a bunch of extra batteries. It's a brand new product from DJI. Now, this is going to be a little bit of a weird clip because I've had this for a couple of weeks, right? This all happened a couple of weeks ago, but I can't release the video until they announce the actual product, which happened today. So I've actually had the product for a couple of weeks before you see this video, and I've been out flying it, I've been testing it, I've been doing a lot of different comparisons with other drones. So this is the first clip I'm going to release, which is basically going to be an unboxing of the product. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to open the box with you so we can share this experience. And then I'll do a specification section and maybe a closer look. I definitely want to spend some time flying it, so I'll do a first flight video. I want to do a ton of comparisons because there's going to be a lot of questions about how does the Mini 3 compare to the Mini 3 Pro? How does it compare to the Mini 2? How does it compare to other Mini drones that are out there? So I'm going to spend a lot of time and do clips comparing it so you can make the best informed decision about what drone is right for you. But for today, I'm rambling on and I want to get inside this box. Today's video is going to be the unboxing just to show you what comes with this particular uh, fly more combination. And I'll go through some specifications because one of the things a lot of people are going to be asking is, how does this differ? Is it close to the Mini 2? Is it closer to the Mini 3 Pro? And the honest answer is, I've seen the specifications. It's sort of a blending of the two, so it fits comfortably right in that Goldilocks zone between the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 Pro. So it's got some advantages over the Mini 2. It isn't quite a Mini 3 Pro, so you're going to have to decide if it makes sense for you. But I have to tell you, I'm always blown away by the engineering efforts that DJI puts into their products because what I've seen from the specifications is that they've really dramatically improved some aspects of the Mini 2. They've actually improved some of the aspects of this drone over what the Mini 3 Pro can provide, but it fits right in that middle zone, which is going to be perfect for a lot of flyers, especially if you're a new flyer or you're looking for a drone as maybe your second drone to take on vacation with you because, boy, I'll tell you, you can't beat a Mini drone like this that weighs less than 250 grams. So anyway, I'm rambling on here. Let me get inside the box because <laughs> I have a lot of fun but nothing gets me more excited than playing with brand new technology like this. So this is one of the best days possible in the channel. All right, let me open up the box. So I don't use a gigantic butching, a butcher knife like a lot of people do. I have this slice opener and I love this thing. I think it's fantastic. I've talked about this company in the channel. It's a wonderful product. You can't cut yourself. It's sharp, but it doesn't cut you. Let me get in the box. All right. So there seems to be one tape box, up, a tape spot up here. Let me open that up. All right, we're in. We're in the box. Now... <laughs> I'm going to open it up. Ooh, oh, there's a case. The fly more comes with a case. All right, so let's pull this out. That's it. The box is empty. There's your case. Now, again, I have to say this. I love the fact that when you buy a DJI mini drone, in most cases, you're getting a really nice carry case that allows you to carry the drone, but more importantly, keeps everything organized because one of the challenges of flying a drone is there's a lot of stuff you got to bring along. You have to have cables and batteries and chargers and connectors and all kinds of things. If you don't have a case like this, you can put some of that stuff in your pocket, you can put it in the back of your car, but I guarantee you, you're going to end up on site one of those times and you're not going to have everything you need and there's nothing more frustrating than driving an hour to a location and missing a cable. So having a case like this is a really, really big advantage because everything fits in there. All right, so let's uh, take a look at it. It looks pretty similar to a lot of the other cases that DJI's included with their drones. It's got a really nice textured exterior to it. It looks weatherproof, which means you can get it wet, you can get it dirty, you can wipe it off. And I've had a few of these cases and they just work out really great. So on the back of it, there seems to be a little zipper here which opens up uh, a little pouch in the back. So there's a spot in the back here that you can put a few things in. That's a nice little addition there. And I think that was on the other case as well, but I like the fact that I've got a little extra space in the back that would be a perfect spot for me to take my ham sandwich along for a long day of flying. But let's get this guy opened up. All right, let me open up the front. So you have a really nice shoulder strap here if you like that kind of thing. You can shorten that as well. And then I'll open up the case. So there's one main zipper on the front that uh, pulls around the whole front of it like that and spins down like that. So you've got a nice wide opening. There you go. So let me fold that back. 
<laughs> now, now the combination I have includes that remote controller that has the screen built in. It's the DJI RC, which is one of my favorite accessories that DJI has released. This kit has that as well. And I'll talk about the advantages of that, but let me get into the drone. All right, so what do we got here? We got a package with some stuff in it. There's the DJI RC. What a beautiful controller that is. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then below that, it looks like we have a charging hub with two batteries in it. So I'm imagining there's a battery in the drone as well because you get three batteries with the Flymore kit. A couple of desiccants in the bottom. Always throw these out. Don't leave these laying around because dogs like these, kids like these, it's not a good thing to just have laying around because they look like maybe sugar packets and you certainly don't want somebody putting that in their coffee. All right, there's the drone. Let me get that out next. Boy, it's a perfect fit. So the drone slides in the side right here, and you can put the controller in the front and everything else behind it. And there looks like a pouch up top here too. Let's see what's up there. Another zipper right here, you can see that. And just like the other one, there's a little extra space up here for all the extra things you need. So there's propellers, tons of propellers. Anything else up there? Nope, that's pretty much it. Okay, so we have everything out of the bag. Let me put that aside. And now let's take a look at some of the stuff. Now, the controller I've had before, I've been flying with this controller ever since it came out. And I love this controller. I can't say enough good things about this controller. It greatly simplifies your flying experience. You basically have the drone and the controller, and that's all you'll need to fly. You can spin up the controller, spin up the drone, and put the drone up in the air. The challenge with using the other, the RCN1 controller, is that you have to use your phone or a tablet. Some people like that because you can have a larger tablet, but for me, there's a bit of a hassle involved with that where you have to have the right cable, it's gotta connect, the application has to be updated, your phone or your tablet has to be charged, the controller has to be charged. With this one, you're charging one device and you can go out there and fly. So it's a wonderful product. And again, I'll take a closer look at this when we get a little further into the clip, but I want to get into the drone because I have so many questions about what this looks like. So let, let me open this up. Nice little bag. <laughs> I cannot control my excitement. I just love new products like this. All right, there's the drone. All right, so at first glance, um, man, it's beautiful. So at first glance, it looks to be the same airframe as the Mini 3 Pro. So it looks like it's got the same, I don't want to call it a frog because that's kind of condescending, but it's got a bit of a frog appeal on the front. There are two slots up here, two vents up here that on the Mini 3 Pro have, mo have uh, crash sensors in them. This doesn't have crash avoidance. So that's one of the differences between this and the Mini 3 Pro. Now, I could argue strongly after flying a while that Crash avoidance is not something that I use a lot, I'll be honest with you, because I fly close to a lot of things for those dramatic shots, and crash avoidance is sort of like that backseat driver when you're heading to a concert or something that wants to tell you the best way to get to the concert, so he's constantly nagging you about, go this way, go that way, look out over there, what are you doing? So crash avoidance is kind of cool, but for me, I turn it off a lot of the time, so that's not a big deal, but these two up top here, I'll bet you are vents to bring extra air in across the electronics. So let me take a look at some of the other features on the drone. So let me open up the drone. I'll pull out the arms really gently. Boy, this is a beautiful airframe. I'll tell you, I fell in love with this when the Mini 3 Pro came out. The Mini 2 looked great, and the Mini, the original Mavic Mini was great, the Mini SE is great, but this new airframe just does some pretty incredible things as far as design goes. Uh, all right, so you've got, looks like bottom sensors. Yeah, you've got VIO sensors on the bottom. So those VIO sensors are important because if you're flying indoors and there's no GPS around, you can't receive a signal in your house, those keep the drone stable over a surface. So those are bouncing infrared signals off of whatever surface is below the drone just to calculate how close it is to the actual ground, but more importantly, to keep it stable in the air. So those are really important if you're flying indoors. The challenge with VIO sensors though, is that they can get confused outside. If there's a shiny surface like water or snow or ice, they really get confused because that infrared signal ricochets off that shiny surface in kind of a weird way. So if you fly it too low over water, ice, or snow, you could have some issues with it, but in this case, it's going to keep it incredibly stable. So you've got that. All right, there's the battery in the back. Same type of battery. I'll pull that out in a little bit. A little sticker there. Let me get that off. Pull the battery out. So the battery uh, looks about the same as the battery from the Mini 3 Pro. And again, with the smaller battery in it, It'll actually um, stay under the 249 grams. They do offer a plus battery for this that takes it over the 249 grams, but greatly extends the flight time. Now, here's a couple of things that are going to blow your mind that I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but I'll hold off on that for one second. I want to look at the camera because I had a question. Oh, it's beautiful. All right. So what they've done with this camera is the one big difference between the Mini 2 and the brand new Mini 3 is the camera. 
the actual camera and the imaging system behind it. So this camera, unlike the Mini 2, which was a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, the Mini 3, this one, and the Mini 3 Pro both have the 1 over 1.3 inch sensor, which is the larger sensor. And that's important because it gives you a lot more information coming through the lens. You get a lot more light in, you get a better crisper picture. The other thing they changed on this though was the aperture. The aperture on the Mini 2 was an f2.8. This one is a 1.7. So if you're into photography, what a larger aperture gives you is, again, a lot more control over the light coming in. So if you've got really bright days, you'll get great detail. If you've got really dark nights, you'll get really good highlights. So that's important. The other thing they changed, though, which is super important, is they've actually upgraded the HDR technology inside the Mini 3. So the Mini 3 uses an on-chip HDR technology, which is sort of a custom algorithm that's built into the silicone. And I know I'm getting nerdy here, but it's super important to understand this. And there's two ways that HDR works works. If you're out on a really bright day, it'll handle that very well. It'll tamp down some of the brightness to give you the definition you need, and you won't have a, an image that's washed out because of all the brightness. Like if you're flying over the ocean in the summertime and you hit that sandy beach, believe me, that can wash out an image. But it also has a secondary mode that it'll jump into in low light conditions. So it can not only flatter the bright environments, but it also flatters the dark environments, which is really something unique, because a lot of the drones have a standard HDR that they apply to anything, any image that comes in through the lensing, and it can't really balance those two extremes very well. So bright and dark, it can't handle that, so it kind of goes for some middle ground. This one actually has an intelligent switching built in that'll adjust the HDR based on either really bright environments or really dark environments, so that's a major improvement in the technology. All right, so let me tease you about some of the details that really matter. The two things that are fundamentally different from the Mini 2 are the airframe, obviously. It looks very similar to a Mini 3. I'm going to have to test the accessories, see what fits it. But the airframe is very similar. But the two things they changed are the imaging on the front. Again, the camera, it's a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor with a f1.7 aperture. So it's a bigger aperture, bigger lensing on the front. They also changed the HDR. They've changed the flight characteristics of it as well. And what I mean by that is the drone itself with the basic battery, this battery, I'm giggling when I tell you this, 38 minutes of flight time. Mini 2, 30 minutes of flight time. So you've got eight extra minutes of flight time based on the battery and the technology inside the drone that drinks electrons from that battery is way more efficient. So 38 minutes, which is an insanely long time to be up in the air on a single charge battery. It gets better. The plus battery in this one will give you 51 minutes of flight time. Now, I haven't checked the specs. I know every day things are changing, but I think 51 minutes is the longest flight time available on any drone today with a fully charged battery. So 51 minutes, I, I could fly I could fly a whole afternoon and, and have a lot of fun out of 51 minutes up in the sky. Now, we all know that those metrics are in the zero gravity of outer space under perfect test conditions, but those bragging numbers, I call them bragging numbers, are the best they can ever do. When you put those up against all the other drone companies out there that put up their best numbers, 51 minutes still tops everybody else. So I think phenomenal job on the drone. It's gonna fly longer, it's gonna take better images than the Mini 2. Now what's different than the Mini 3? And I'll spend another clip's time putting together sort of a comparison between the two, but essentially you've got the same airframe, you have longer flight times than the Mini 3, you also have a similar cam uh, imaging package as the Mini 3 Pro. So you're getting kind of a hybrid between the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 in this particular drone. And again, I think it fits right in that middle zone between the high-end Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 2, which was a wonderful drone, still a really good value in a drone. This one is an upgrade from the Mini 2, not quite as high-end or sophisticated as the Mini 3 Pro. So I'll get into a lot more of that in another clip, like I'd mentioned, but let me finish the unboxing. All right, so there's the drone. I get ca so caught up in the specifications because whenever a drone comes out, I think to myself, what am I gonna get from the drone? Like, why would this be interesting to me? Because I already know what the Mini 2 does. I already know what the Mini 3 Pro does. What could they have possibly be built into this drone? Well, I just mentioned a couple of cool things. All right, so here's another bag. Let's see what's in here. It looks like a bunch of manuals to start. Of course, you need manuals. You gotta read the manuals. And I always mention this. I know a lot of you out there are thinking, ah, oh, it's a drone. I've flown drone for years. I can fly that drone. Read through the manuals. I guarantee you there's things in here that may not be intuitive. You're not, you're gonna find things out in here, how to care for the drone, how to charge it, how to pack it away. Read through the manual, it's super important. All right, so here we have a little screwdriver, which is great that they include that. 
Why do you need the screwdriver? You use that to change your propellers. They hand, uh, they give you a nice little Phillips head screwdriver in the kit. I think that's a great thing. It'll fit in your bag, so you'll always have it with you. Looks like two cables here. I've got one that is a USB-C to USB-C. That's a charging cable. I have another one here that's a USB-A to USB-C. And you might be wondering, why do I have two different cables? Well, this one is a charging cable, so you can plug that into the back of the drone and charge the drone. Yep, there's a USB-C in the back of the drone. So you can charge the drone with this one off of any standard wall charger. I will tell you, you'll need a 30 watt charger or larger to charge these batteries. You can use lower uh, power chargers, but they're going to take forever to charge the batteries. So make sure you find a good 30 watt charger. Better yet, if it's a PD charger, because that'll adjust the voltage and current to accommodate the current battery level. So that's your charging cable. Well, what's with the USB to US USB A to USB C? Well, on the charging hub, let me get that guy out. Which again, I haven't seen this, so I'm assuming it's going to be similar to some other charging hubs they've had out. Yep, looks really similar to the Mini 3 Pro. So the charging hub will hold three batteries at a time, and they can be either the standard battery or the plus battery, and it'll charge them in succession or in se sequence like this, serially. So a lot of people ask, well, why don't they charge parallel? The challenge is you'd have to throw a lot of current at this to charge all three batteries simultaneously. So what the hub does is it's got intelligence built into the bottom of it. It's a smart hub. And when you plug the batteries in and connect it up to a charger, it'll interrogate all three batteries to see their current charge level. And it'll pick the one that needs the least amount of charge and fire all the electrons that are coming in from that charger to that battery to fully charge it. When that's fully charged, it'll move on to the next one and move on to the next one. It doesn't have a slot preference. It just does the interrogation, finds a battery that needs the least amount of charge, and charges that one first. And you might be thinking, well, why are they doing it that way? Why don't they pick the one that needs the most charge and charge that one first? But think about it. You want to get back out the door and start flying as quickly as possible. So the battery that needs the least amount of charge is the quickest one to charge. So it'll charge that. Put it in your drone, go out and fly while the other two are charging. You come back, the next one's charged, you're ready to go. All right, back to the cable. So the USB-A to USB-C cable is kind of important because the charging hub not only charges all three batteries, but it acts as a power bank as well. So if you have a battery in here or all three batteries in here, this becomes a portable battery bank that you can turn on connect up the USB-A cable here to a USB-C and use this to charge something else. So you could charge your phone, your tablet, you could even charge the remote controller from it. So they give you kind of a dual function in that uh, charging hub, which I think is kind of great. And they actually call it a two-way charging hub. So these are the kind of innovations that DJI leads the field in. And I know I get accused of being a DJI fanboy all the time, but my honest truth is I chase technology. So I look for exciting, vibrant, new things in the market space, things that haven't been done before, people that are pushing the envelope technologically. And time and time again, DJI surprises me with the engineering they build in and their technologies. And when this first came out a couple of generations ago, this portable unit with the original Mavic Mini, I thought somebody sat down and thought about how I charge my batteries and that I'm carrying a lot of energy cells, if you will, out in the field that I'm not using in my drone anymore because they're down to 25%, wouldn't it be cool if the hub I use to charge them can also supply current out of those batteries to charge other devices like my phone at the end of a long day of flying. So that's the kind of engineering that I really get excited about. And they've made changes in the drone with a lot of current technology like that HDR on chip I was mentioning a while back that really put this out ahead of most of the other drones on the market. I'm not gonna say all of them because there are a lot of drones that are more sophisticated, but they're also a lot higher priced, right? So if you're looking for a drone that fits your budget, that has the advanced features that a lot of people care about, uh, this drone looks like a perfect fit for you. So if you wanna stay tuned next, what I'll do is go through the specifications with a, a sort of a carousel of the drone to show you some of the features and functions. I also wanna take a closer look and I'll probably put that at the end of this clip. I may actually split that out into another clip depending on how long this clips get because I know you guys don't like a 45 minute clip and I wanted to get through most of it today. But there you have it, it's the brand new Mini 3 uh, gorgeous drone from DJI, brand new, just in time for the holidays. Oh, I mentioned the uh, propellers, I should have said that. There are three sets of propellers in here. So what you've got is a set for the drone. There's a set on the drone already. You've got another set here, another set here, and another set here. So you can actually damage three sets of propellers and you've got replacements ready to go. Um, and I'll talk about changing those in another clip because you gotta be really careful to match up the propellers with the right arm because there's clockwise and counterclockwise propellers. But again, that's all explained in the manual. So read through the manual. But that's pretty much it for the unboxing. I love their technology and you can't beat a drone at 249 grams that has incredibly good wind resistance, level five wind resistance. It'll fly 10 kilometers away, which is incredibly far. It has resolution, a live feed resolution back of 720p to the, to the actual uh, controller. 
the underlying architecture, I probably should have mentioned this, the underlying architecture of the drone to the controller is OcuSync 2 or O2. It's not O3, but I don't really care about that because I don't need to go 15 kilometers away because in the US we have limitations called visual line of sight that requires me to keep an eye on the drone when I'm flying it. And I can only get out about 2,500 feet with a drone before I lose sight of it in the air. So for me, 10 kilometers is well beyond what I can see the drone doing. And it's important because that 10 kilometer number means I'm gonna have a rock solid signal in close. So if I'm flying around buildings or trees or other obstructions, I'm not gonna have to worry about losing connection with the drone. So again, it's based on O2 technology, 720p feedback to the live view on the unit, which is more than enough for me. And um, just a wonderful solution all around. So I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and overview View of the brand new DJI Mini 3 drone. And as I've mentioned, I'll be posting an entire series of clips on the channel that cover every aspect of this new drone from DJI, starting with a closer look in a specification video that'll give you all the details you need to get started with the Mini 3. I'll also put a video together comparing the Mini 3 to the Mini 2, as well as comparing the Mini 3 to the Mini 3 Pro, so you have all the information you need to decide which of those drones is right for you. I'll also compare the Mini 3 to some larger drones on the market because what DJI's built here is a very sophisticated airframe with an incredibly good imaging package that really rivals a lot of those larger drones. It just happens to fit into an airframe that weighs less than 250 grams. But don't let the small size fool you because it's a small drone that flies like a much bigger drone. And it might be the perfect drone for a new flyer looking to get into the hobby, or even a flyer that owns bigger drones that's looking for a smaller drone to take on vacation that can still fly really well, have a lot of sophisticated features built in, and capture some incredible footage and amazing pictures. Now, I'll also put some clips together on the first flight, because I know you like to see how the drone handles in the air. I'll put a montage together of video footage I've recorded with it, so you can see how that upgrade and imaging package really impacts the quality of the image. And then I'll come back with uh, probably a top 10 questions clip where I'm trying to answer all the questions you guys have sent me on this brand new drone and I encourage you if you have questions on the Mini 3 drop those in the comments below I'll try to answer as many of those as I can in the comments but I also want to put a clip together to gather up the most common questions and answer those in a clip here in the channel and that way you have all the information you'll need because one of the things I like to do with the channel is to make sure you get the details about the products I'm reviewing so you can make an informed decision now, the last thing I'll say is I really appreciate the subscribership, but if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, what are you waiting for? I'm going to have so much good content posting over the next couple of weeks. Hit that subscribe button down there and join the Drone Valley family, and that way you can be alerted the minute the clip is posted. So we put a new clip up, you get a little ding on your phone, and you know, hey, Drone Valley's got a new clip up. Maybe I'll go there and check it out. So come on in. Join the family. We'd love to have you as part of the team. Anyway, that was it for today. Oh, one last thing. I do have a link below if you want to go check this out. If you use that link, we get a little credit, but you'll be supporting the channel by using that link. So use the link, go check out the product. I think they've built a, an amazing drone here. I really do. Like I said at the beginning, I think it fits right in that Goldilocks zone, that perfect marriage between the Mini 2 and the Mini 3 Pro. I think it's going to be the drone to own this year. I can't wait to get this thing out and get it up in the air. The next couple of days, I'm not going to be in the shop. I'm going to be out there flying this drone. And as you guys know, I'm going to have that smile ear to ear when I get this thing up in the air. So that's pretty much it for today. Thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, as always, <laughs> happy flying.